Hello everyone, this is Stratos Ayani from Craftius.com and we are back with a new tutorial in which I'm going to show you how to create a dramatic uh, black and white portrait photo with the help of Exposure 6, a plugin by, by Alien Skin that I use a lot this uh, period of time. And also I'm going to show you how you can customize some effects you're liking in order to achieve exactly the effect that you are looking for. So actually we're going to go from here to here with the help of Exposure 6 and a few tricks that we are going to use within Photoshop. So without any further delay, I'm going to erase this layer and I'm going to start over in order to show you exactly what I did. Now, once you have your photo open in Photoshop, um, uh, you have to go to your filter menu. I'm going as well to the filter menu as you can see. I'm selecting Alien Skin and Exposure 6. And I'm going to use a, a preset that I have somewhere around here. If I recall well, it's uh, black and white, uh, infrared. And I'm going to select the fog preset. Now, this is before and this is after. This is before and this is after. What the fog preset does is this. A, it turns my photo into a black and white photo and B, it creates some very nice glows around the highlights of the photo. I'm going to select fog bright in order to see the areas that are affected, but this is actually too bright for my taste, so I'm not going to select fog bright, I'm going to select fog period. And this is again before and after, before and after. I'm going to hit apply <clears throat> and this effect is going to be applied on my photo. Now, I love this effect, but I would probably like it to be a little more washed out. So I'm going to hit undo and I'm going to show you a little trick in exposure. I'm going to filter again, Alien Skin Exposure 6. I am selecting the fog preset once more, but I'm also going to the tone curve panel here and I'm going to grab the lower left control point from this diagonal line and I'm going to slightly drag it upwards and to the left. And you can see that I am adding a little bit of paint, uh, a little bit of fade, I'm sorry, not paint, and also I'm making the colors and the contrast a bit more washed out. So I have a preset here, but I can customize it by using these tools in these panels exactly to my uh, taste. And this is why I like very much exposure because it has some great presets but also allows me to customize everything uh, in order to uh, fill my needs, let's say. I don't know if fill my needs is the correct, uh, the correct uh, way to say it, but damn, I'm Greek, you can forgive me. <laughs> now, the second thing that I'm going to do is this. I'm going to the filter panel again, I'm going to select Alien Skin and Exposure 6 once more and I'm going to turn off every single panel that you can see here. So I'm going to turn off the basic panel by clicking here on the green dot, color, curve, etc, etc, etc. So I'm basically turning off everything except for the overlays. This I'm going to reactivate again by clicking here on this small circle. I'm going to click it to open it up and I'm going to select texture. What this does is this. It will add an overlay texture on top of my photo. I'm going to click here. I'm going to select scratches and I'm going to navigate through the scratch presets in order to find something that I might like. So uh, I think this preset is nice. So I'm going to hit scratches eight and click apply. But please observe what's going on right now. Exposure Seek is going to take the layer that I had selected, which is this one. It's going to create right here a copy of this layer and it's going to apply and incorporate at the same time the overlay effect. This is good, but, it, but also it creates me a small problem. If I want to adjust or readjust, let's say, the overlay effect with the scratches after I have applied everything, including this effect, I have to take this layer, I have to delete it over here, and I have to go to filter exposure uh, six, and I have to play with the sliders, etc., etc., to reapply the effect with 
the different settings from here. For example, I'm lowering the opacity, I have to hit apply, etc. etc. I'm going to show you a trick to do this uh, a little differently, but this trick will allow you to have great freedom in terms of the effects with the overlays that Exposure 6 can give you. Now, I'm going to delete this photo layer again. And this time I'm going to start by creating a new layer by clicking here. Now, this new layer is empty, but if I go to the background color and select a black color and I click OK, I can then hit Control Delete on my keyboard and I can fill instantly this empty layer with black color. Now, why I'm filling the empty layer with black color? Because A, exposure and uh, most of the filters actually and plugins don't work on an empty layer. And B, I'm going to actually make everything that is black within this layer invisible. And I'm going to show you how in a second. So I'm going again to the Exposure 6 plugin. I'm deactivating everything. I'm keeping only the overlays panel active. And I'm going to the texture and I'm selecting uh, scratches number eight from here. I'm going to hit apply. But this time before I hit apply, I'm going to turn the opacity all the way up to 100. Then I will hit apply and I will wait for the effect to appear on my monitor. Now, here's the thing. I have the black layer that I used in order to create this effect. I'm going to deactivate it by clicking on the eye over here. And now I'm going to the black layer with the scratches applied on it and I'm going to change its blending mode from here, from normal to screen. Oops, sorry. Screen. Oops, sorry, wrong layer. <laughs> I'm going to the black layer which has the uh, scratches on it and I'm going to select screen. Ah, that's much better. So, when I turn this black layer with the scratches on it from normal to screen everything that is black within the layer with the scratches becomes invisible and this allows me to see the photo underneath it so i have the scratches on a new layer completely isolated and this allows me to turn it into screen to blend perfectly with the background photo and also it allows me to do these cool things number one I can go to the opacity and I can play with the opacity of the scratches now freely as many times as I want without having to go back to the exposure plugin. Number two, I can hit Control T on my keyboard and this will allow me to transform the texture exactly the way I want it. I want to, okay? So I have, as you can see, uh, make the texture bigger and I'm going to hit Enter. I actually transformed the layer with the scratches. Now, another cool trick. I'm going to the layer again with the scratches and I'm going to hit this thing over here. This will uh, create a layer mask for this layer and the layer mask is completely white. Now, wherever the layer mask is white, the same part of this effect will be applied on my photo. So if I have scratches over here and everything is white on its layer mask, the scratches will appear everywhere within my frame. But if I want, let's say for example, to erase the effect from this area where her face is uh, appearing, I can do this. I can go to the layer mask, I can click it, I can go to the brush tool, and I'm going to select as a foreground color, a black color, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, the next step is to make the brush bigger or smaller by using the bracket keys, actually the left bracket and the right bracket key on your keyboard. And I think this size is perfectly fine. And finally, while I have my layer mask active, I'm going to paint with my paint brush with black over the areas that I want to be unaffected by the scratches effect slash overlay. So as you can see, I am actually making her face scratch free. Why? Because I have created a layer mask and I have painted with black in the areas where I want the effect to be actually non-effective. Uh, I'm actually protecting these areas from the scratches. I'm going to lower the overall opacity of the scratches as well. 
And as you can see, now I have created an effect uh, exactly to my liking and I have customized the scratches texture exactly to be... Uh, ah, I'm sorry, I'm forgetting my English. I have customized the scratches effect exactly to my liking, let's say. Now, another cool trick that I'm going to show you before we close this tutorial, I'm going to create a new layer again and this is a new empty layer. I'm going to select the brush one more time and I'm going to click here on the foreground color and make sure that I have the white color selected. I'm going to hit OK and I'm going to make my brush with the white paint a lot bigger by pressing the right bracket key. I'm going on the top right corner over here of my photo and I'm going to simply click once. So I'm going to do a click now and this will appear. So what I have effectively done is this. I have created a new light source which is emulating the light that is uh, coming from my flash over here. But this is actually too bright. So I'm going to select the move tool and I'm going to finally move this thing a little bit outside of my frame right here. So I have created a new light source which adds up to the photo and uh, everything now looks exactly like I wanted them to look. So, what I have done, I have created a new effect with Exposure 6. I have made a black layer on top of everything else and I have applied on this black layer a scratch texture effect and I have taken this effect with the scratches, I have turned its layer's opacity down and I have also changed its blending mode from normal to screen. After that, I have uh, created a new layer mask for the scratches layer and I have painted in the mask with the help of my brush and the black paint in the areas where I want uh, to have scratch free... Uh, ah, sorry, I didn't say this correctly. I painted with black within the mask in the areas where I want to have no scratches at all. And this allowed me to customize the effect exactly to what I wanted to achieve. I hope it's useful, I hope it's uh, quite understandable by you, but if something is difficult and you, cannot, and you cannot understand it, please let me know in the comments below or send me an email and I will do my best in order to solve all your questions regarding how to recreate this amazing black and white effect from a portrait shoot. This is Stratus Ayani from Crafties.com. Thanks for watching, thanks for your time and make sure that if you like this tutorial, uh, please share it, subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can hear my awful English accent and my hopefully helpful tutorials. And uh, also, if you want, you can subscribe to our mailing list and we will send an email to your mailbox whenever we have a new tutorial up online so you don't miss anything, including my weird freaking accent. Stratos Ayani from Crafties.com signing off. Cheers and until next time, keep shooting and stay safe. Bye!